Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we are heading again to Theros Beyond Death Standard to play a deck I'm pretty excited for. This is Rakdos Croxa Discard, basically this weird, synergistic, hybrid-y, Croxa Discard-y, slightly devotion-ish deck, and I think this deck could be pretty sweet just making our opponent discard a card every single turn eventually getting Kroxa to close out the game or if things go wrong gray merchant to stabilize us gain us a bunch of life maybe even kill our opponent so a quick reminder before we break down the deck if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy budget magic in general it would be amazing of you if you take a second click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen it's a great way to support the channel and the site for free so let's talk Rakdos Kroxa discard and the idea of this deck is pretty simple right now in standard uh, fires really big archetype nissa ramp style techs really big archetype and those are decks where if we can make our opponent discard a card every single turn it makes it hard for a fires deck to get to four lands and play a fires and still have something left over to put into play with fires so we're trying to tax those decks and then hopefully be good enough against aggro the centerpiece of our deck is one of our new elder giants croxa titan of death hunger so croxa is basically a two mana discard spell comes down it dies whatever makes our opponent discard maybe gets in some damage and then eventually we can escape it back from the graveyard have a 6-6 six, six. it keeps making our opponent discard and since we have so much discard in our deck our opponent's probably going to be empty handed which means Croxus should be hitting for three rather consistently once we can escape it into play to go along with Croxa, we have two other two mana discard creatures Yarox Fenlurker and Bugler Rats <laughs> but basically these are just other two mana ways that come down and put our opponent down a card Yarrick Fenlurker makes our opponent exile one from hand. Burglar Rats forces our opponent to discard. But together, these cards mean that we just have a million two for ones. Fenlurker, Burglar Rats, yes, they're not incredibly powerful cards, but technically, they come down, make our opponent discard. They can chump, maybe trade with something. So they are technically two for ones. And with 12 of these two mana cards in our deck, we can hopefully cast them again and again and again over the first few turns of the game to really just kind of grind our opponent out of the game and leave them unable to execute their game plan we also have one davriel rogue shadow mage which more discarding the downside of davriel is it dies really easily so it's not as consistent as i would like which why it's only a one of but in the best case scenario especially against more controlling decks it can come down make our opponent discard multiple times and then get in for some damage as well so this is our main main deck discard package then we have nightmare shepherd so nightmare shepherd looks a little strange at this deck but it's actually very synergistic with our discard plan you probably know what it does when a non-token creatures of ours dies we can exile it and get a 1-1 copy of it that's also a nightmare so in our deck nightmare shepherd is very sweet with sacrifice outlets we have woe strider and also Playcrafter. Woe Strider is the best of the bunch because we can sacrifice something at any time for free. Playcrafter is very synergistic with our deck as well. Good way to get rid of Planeswalkers and creatures. But the trick is, in the mid game, let's say we cast our Burglar Rats, we cast our Yarrox Fenlurker, we get down a Woe Strider, we get on a Nightmare Shepherd, we can get to the point where, on our opponent's draw step, we set a stop and we sacrifice our Fenlurker or our Burglar Rats to Woe Strider to get it to come back to snag the one card that our opponent drew for their turn. So this can kind to hard lock our opponent out of the game for several turns once we get them empty handed which buys us a lot of time to beat down with nightmare shepherd and croxa and win the game play crafter we can't control it as well as woe strider we can't do the draw step stop trick but it still comes down can sacrifice one of our things we get it back for even more discard or we could do the sweet trick with double play crafter that's one of my favorite synergies in this deck you got nightmare shepherd you play crafter you force your opponent to sacrifice something we sacrifice play crafter that triggers nightmare shepherd which gets back play crafter which forces our opponent to sacrifice something we can sacrifice a 1-1 playcrafter for so for three mana we end up with a double edict essentially with nightmare shepherd and playcrafter and then since we have this package going we also have gray merchant the idea isn't to be a devotion deck but gray merchant is just a great finisher for this deck one of the problems with playing a whole bunch of really cheap discard creatures like yarks fenlurker bugler rats where they're good at taxing our opponent and kind of putting them off their game plan we're still playing a bunch of one 
one, so it takes us a long time to close out the game, Grey Merchant joins with Croxa to give us a very fast finish, where eventually we Grey Merchant, drain for five or six, maybe we can sacrifice it to Woe Strider, get it back, drain for five or six more, throw in some Croxa damage, maybe a Nightmare Shepherd hit or two, and that's our way to close out the game quickly, because once we empty our opponent's hand, we're always at risk that our opponent will draw like a Hydroid Crossus and refuel, undo all of our work, or maybe an Edge Walling Keeper, chain some Adventure Creatures, undo all of our discard work, so having a fast way to close out the game, very beneficial for the deck. Otherwise, Tamarack Calls the Dead probably looks a little bit strange, but it makes some dorks. We have 28 creatures in the deck, so we should basically always hit with the first two lore counters to get a 2-2. So we get two 2-2s two, two for three mana. Eventually, Scry gain a bit of life. More importantly, this makes sure we get cards in our graveyard to be able to get Croxa back on turn four. Uh, that's one of the risks with all of our discard being based on creatures rather than like duresses and agonizing remorses that we might crocs and just not get up to enough cards to get it back tamarack calls the dead salves that bolus is citadel just a one-up for some card advantage then we have a couple of drag to the underworlds to have targeted removal in the deck mana base wise castle lockwain probably the best land in our deck giving us a source of card advantage in our mana base a bunch of budget dual lads if you pick up the deck add one more mountain over a swamp that was a bit of a deck building error on my part otherwise sideboard we get a bunch of removal for aggro, Disfigure, Anger's Rampage, Tamarat Chosen from Death I really like against aggro, it blocks well against decks like Mono Red and incidentally gains us life, plus it's good graveyard hate if we run into uh, a Uro deck, some other sort of escape style deck, Massacre Girl to just massacre the board, Duress and Agonizing Remorse let us customize our discard, especially good if we need to pick off like Ember Cleaves, Nissa's, specific Planeswalkers, uh, and powerful threats that can beat us on their own, and then Treacherous Blessing, a little bit more card advantage, and that is Aractos Croxa Discard for Standard, and that's our budget magic deck for this week. So let's jump into some games, see the deck in action. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy it, and I will talk to you soon. All right, budget magic time. We are playing some Aractos Discard, and we're going to keep this. Uh, we have Discard, Discard, Discard starting on turn two, and if we draw one land, that gets us to Temerite Calls the Dead, which hopefully is going to get us to... to uh, Croaxa returning. We would like to keep drawing lands, ideally. Plague Crafter. Well, land and burglar rats. Bugler rats, I mean. <laughs> Opponent discards a, a cavalier, plays a land, horn beetle. Not a land. Well, burglar rats make you discard. We're not doing the draw land part of this, though. Opponent. Wow, main deck mystic repeal will pass the turn. Land for our opponent, and Yorvo grows the Horn Beetle attack. So, well, no blocks. Uh, we cannot hit land number three. Croaxa! Make our we made our opponent discard a billion times, but I don't think it's going to matter because we can't draw land. Opponent discards a land, drops to 17, no attacks. So we can't, we can't stop this onslaught of creatures. Opponent plays a land, goes attacking. I guess we block Yorvo. Drop to 13. Oh. Well, we drew the land, but a bit too late. And we will scoop it up. Well, I guess we won't scoop it up, but we are. We needed an untapped land there. Opponent grows a horn beetle, goes attacking. So we will block, I guess. Sure, whatever. Just too slow. Opponent passes. Well, play the land. Plague Crafter. Oh, if only we had hit our lands earlier. That's exactly how we drew it up. Opponent, land, goes attacking. Hits us to four. Passes. Well, Evolving Wilds. Crack Evolving Wilds. We did finally hit our lands. It took way longer than we wanted. We will see. Croaxa. One, two, three, four, and five. Get it back. Opponent. Got discard. It's land. Alright, this is the turn. If we get to untap with Karaksa and start playing Grey Merchants, we could get back in this. Opponent plays a land. Passes. Alright. Well, uh, we will Grey Merchant. Gain back a bit of that life we've been losing. Up to seven. Uh, attack you. Opponent's got a discard. Empty-handed. 
Down to five. Are we going to come back after missing those land drops? Pwn it. Cavalier of Thorns. All right, that's a good one. Opponent gets a land, mills some stuff, grows a horn beetle, goes attacking. Or not. No attacks. One, two, three. That looks like five to me. Oh, we missed the land drops, but we got there in the end. Croaxa, the stabilizer. And the discard plan worked pretty well. Just discard, 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 discard. Against an aggro deck. <laughs> Somehow. Mono green. All right. Uh, so opponent... Opponent's playing aggro. What do we want? So I think Massacre Girl seems helpful. Disfigure and maybe like Rampage? Going down, we probably got to go down Davriel in this matchup. Go down, hmm, Davriel and maybe a couple, oh, maybe we go down. All right, let's go down some Burglar Rats and a Woe Strider. Try it like that. Huh, all right. I mean... That is a power Croxa. It looked bad because we didn't draw those lands and our opponent grew a huge creature quickly, but eventually Croxa hit the battlefield and it was enough. All right. We got discard and we got Gary. Opponent. Shadow Spear. Sure. Drag to the Underworld is a good draw. Swamp. Um, I think we go bottom. We have four lands already, so we should hit Gary on time. Opponent plays land and love struck beast. And love struck beast. We'll play the land. Fenlurker, you. Opponent gets rid of Westing Beast. Wow, opponent equips. Okay, sure. No blocks. Oh, Fenlurker, you. Get rid of a Vivian. Play the lad. Pass the turn. I mean, I guess we are going to need another land now. Boy, are we going to get punished for leaving another love struck beast? Are we going to get punished for leaving that to the bottom? Opponent, combat. Gets in. Sure. No blocks. Well, crack evolving wilds. Get a swamp. Well, play Castle Lock Lane, Nightmare Shepherd. Hopefully this shuts down our opponent's uh, aggression, because if we block, we get back Fen Lurkers, make our opponent discard. We did hit land. It's tap, but it is land. Opponent. All right. Hits their land. Runs out the Horn Beetle. Passes. Oh, Temple of Malice. Scry. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I guess we go bottom. Go to combat. This doesn't give reach. Trample lifelink. All right, get in with our Nightmare Shepherd. Hit our opponent. Down to 20 past the turn. Love struck beast. Uh, do we even want to kill that? Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Opponent grows a horn beetle. Whoa! Going with a big attack. Uh, so we will block, block, pump, kill the horn beetle, get him back, empty the hand. Yes, please. Opponent, questing bees down. Yes. Next. Yes. No, no cards in hand, please. All right, empty-handed. Well, play Grey Merchant. Drain our opponent. Play the land. Go to combat. Get it. Hit our opponent, and I think we got it. I think we got it. The discard plan. We made our opponent discard so many cards. It really worked. Opponent attempts. I can't believe we're winning this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move it over. Sure. Life link it up, my friend. Another opponent has drawn all the Love Strike Bees literally in their deck. Opponent attacks. Well, uh, the bad news for our opponent is we get to block here. And I believe this leaves our opponent dead. We get back Grey Merchant. Yes. Drain our opponent for a bunch. Down to eight. Crack Evolving Wilds. Swamp. Untap. Um, yeah, Gary. Finish the deal, and that is discard. Take it down aggro at 38 life. We stripped their hand. Two questing beats of Vivian. That's what we want this deck to do. That is exactly it. And that wasn't even a matchup where you're like, okay, discard's probably insane. That was like mono green aggro. Uh, and discard was still very good. Very, very good. Whew. All right. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. Budget magic time. We are playing some Rakdos discard. Croxa discard. And... 
Yeah, all right, we'll keep this. I mean, this hand's not insane, but oh boy, all right. Well, this is gonna be interesting. Well, we'll keep Croxa. Innkeeper can draw a lot of cards, which undoes a lot of our work. All right, there is card draw number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think step one has to be get rid of this innkeeper as quickly as possible. If we can get rid of the innkeeper, we can cut off some of the card draw. Opponent, land, and Domri's ambush. Opponent gets in, gets in. Ooh, more card draw. All right. We drop to 12. Well, play Burglar Rats. Make our opponent discard. Yes, Innkeeper. Oh, Embercleave discarded. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> That's fine. Nothing to see here. Knight draws a card. Land. Love struck beast. Opponent attacks. Is there any way out of this? We drop to eight. Not really seeing it. Play Castle Lockwain. I mean, I guess we have to play Croxa. With the trigger on the stack, kill Rhyme Rock Knight. However, Lovestruck Beast gets to draw a card. Yeah. Ugh, yeah, this Edgewall Edkeeper's been, uh, been a problem. Opponent. Gets in. Well, no blocks. Down to eight. Land Grey Merchant. Gain back a bit of life. I mean, we're fighting the good fight, but this Innkeeper has just undone basically all of our work. There's a Questing Beast. All right. Um, I think we are officially dead. Opponent attacks, attacks. So we chomp Lovestruck Beast. Drop to six. Draw nothing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Edgewall Innkeeper. This is a. Uh, this is not our best discard matchup for sure because uh, our opponent can undo our discarding. Thankfully, we can take out some of our discard stuff and bring in a bit more removal, hopefully. So, Massacre Girl definitely in. Disfigure in. Rampage in. And maybe Temerat. We can go down. Uh, Davriel is just gonna die. Um, probably a Plague Crafter, a Woe Strider, and the Rats. And let's try it like that. So a little bit less discardy, a little bit more removal-y is probably our best bet against uh, Aggrodex. We get to play first, and, well, okay, we'll keep this. This hand's reasonable. Gonna need to hit lands at some point, but as long as we hit lands, it's good. Opponent playing a tap land, cracking it. Forest. Well, all right, land and Fen Lurker. Get rid of a card. Temple of Malice is a decent draw. Temple of Malice lets us Scry next turn and play Temerat. And Grey Merchant with a bunch of black mana symbols is nice. All right, there's an Innkeeper. I'll play Temple of Malice. Temerat calls the dead. Do we want Temerat calls the dead? Hmm. Yeah, I think we can keep it. And then just disfigure the Innkeeper. Go attack it. Opponent. Love struck beast. Ooh, and passes? Okay. Well, we will Temerat Calls the Dead. Ugh, whiff. Alright. Temple of Malice. Um now I think we go bottom. I don't, I think we need a land now more than another Temerat Calls the Dead. No attacks. Whiffing there was not ideal, but uh boonage. Okay. Ambushes, sure. Gets it, hits us. Mill, mill, mill. Eat a Fen Lurker, make a 2 2. Play Croxa. Make our opponent discard. Temerat. 
pass the turn. And we have the cards in the graveyard for Croxa to come back. Opponent just keeps ambushing, sure. The problem for our opponent is Crocs is going to be coming, and Croxa is big. Opponent gets in, hits us, no blocks. Down to 15. Uh, we will keep the mountain. Croxa. One, two, three, four. Exile stuff that we can't exile to Temerite Calls to Dead. Play Croxa, get a 6-6, six, six, makes our opponent discard. And sticks around. Yeah, Spellbreaker down. We will get in with our zombie. Time to go aggro. We have a Croxa. What do you got about it? Land, dead. Questing Beast, sure. I mean, we will block because... We can get back Karaxa again. Opponent passes. Oh, we play a land. We play Tamarat. Tamarat calls it, and opponent scoops it up. They know that life is ending, and okay. Apparently, we can keep up with aggro. It is possible. It is possible. Opponent kept the two lander, but we were able to kill the edge wall Ed keeper and uh, just grind him out, grind him out. All right, that's what the deck can do. Crocs is pretty sweet when it gets going, that's for sure. Do we want to change anything else? I think no. Run it like that. Try to do that again. Keep the Keeper off the battlefield. That is the card that makes things go wrong in a hurry. Also, we got to be aware of Embercleave. Embercleave is a card that j can jank us out when things are looking good. Ugh. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Ugh. We're on the draw. We get a Scry Lad. We have two things at two mana. Oh, we have a disfigure to kill an innkeeper. Massacre Girl is our secret sideboard tech. Can we keep this? It's so risky. Oh, we do get to scry. We have two things at two mana. Temrat calls the dead. Oh, yeah, I think we keep. On the draw with the scry land, I think this is a keep. Mostly because disfigure is very important in this matchup. Well, that's not a land. That is also, uh-oh. Well, okay. Uh, well, maybe we shouldn't have done this, opponent. All right, that's Temple of Malice is good. And okay, okay, things are working out-ish. Land for our opponent. Clothis. Well, land and Temerite calls the dead. Mill, 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 exile Woe Strider, get a zombie. Clothis gonna start doing clothis -y stuff. Sure, down to 18. Tap land. We would like to just keep drawing lands, ideally, to the bottom. Passes. All right. Mill Nightmare Shepherd. Play Fen Lurker. Get rid of a land. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. Clothes gets to make a mana. Nissa, I guess, would be pretty problematic here. Innkeeper. Land. How much can our opponent do with this innkeeper? That is the big question. Nothing yet. All right, we get to scry for a land. Tamarack calls the dead bottom. Castle Lockwing top. Um. Play Croxa. Make our opponent discard. Disfigure innkeeper. Hit our opponent. Down to 12. Is this going to work? Opponent. It's Croxa. Land. Scries. Bottom. Passes. Castle Lock Wayne. Comes into play tapped, unfortunately. Well, we will. Croxa away the last card. And a post scoops it up. Oh, taking out aggro. Taking out innkeepers. Rakdos discard. Croxa. It is doing it. Okay. Okay, okay. Maybe this deck works. Whoo. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Huh. All right. <laughs> okay. Sweet, sweet. Budget magic time. We are playing some Arctos Croxa discard. And, eh, this is fine. Discard, discard. Hopefully. Oh, all right. Mono red. Well, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Mono red on. Mono red being on the the draw is a very very tough matchup. Robber of the rich. Yeah. 
Exile's Timer calls the dead, hits us, hits us. Well, play the swamp, play a Fen Lurker. I mean, Mono Red is tough matchup, period, but it's especially tough with us uh, losing the die roll here, I think. Pota. Uh, double Fervent Champion, makes things worse, gets in. Triggers, 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 triggers. Exiles a land. Well, no blocks. We are down to 10 already. Ugh, that's why you can't lose die rolls. Light up the stage. Annex and Tin Street Dodger. Land and Tin Street Dodger. Well, play the land. Play. Temerite calls the dead, I guess. Oh, no! Temerite calls the dead. We have so many creatures. Now we're. Well, <laughs> I don't think we we're going to win that anyway, but now we're definitely not going to win. Actually, we're just, yeah, we can uh, we can concede. We're just dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. I mean, we would have had a little tiny bit of hope if we had hit a creature. That is a little unlucky, just based on our, our creature count. Tamarai Calls the Dead should hit a creature pretty much every time. Because we have, we have 28 in our deck, so that's very close to every other card being a creature. So the odds of not having one in three, pretty pretty not good. Well, uh, Temrat comes in. Oh, this matchup's so tough. Disfigure Angrass Rampage. Go down Bolus' Citadel. Go down Plague Crafter is actively bad here. Uh, Davriel, also not very good. We can bring in the Massacre Girls. And, um... I guess Rampage is not that great either. Because of Annex. All right, we'll try it like that. I feel like every time I run into Mono Red, they have multiple Fervent Champions. And Fervent Champion is a card that's like pretty bad unless you have two of them. Then it becomes very good. And I feel like I run into uh, that draw very frequently against Mono Red. I think I to play first. Also a little awkward that we have played that we have played, like, uh, a lot of aggro decks. No fires, no control, not even any mid-range. Which I think is probably our best matchup. So I guess on the other hand, we've beaten two aggro decks so far. Not as aggro as mono red, but still, aggro decks. Awkwardly, yeah, uh, Scorch Spitter. Awkwardly, I think we are cracking this for a swamp. As strange as that sounds, because we need to be able to curve out here. Now, well, land and Fen Lurker. Go down a card. This Grey Merchant could be good. That is a way we can gain a bunch of life. Still some fear of... Still some fear of our opponent uh, Ember Cleaving us. Mountain. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Bone Crushes, sure. Pings us. Ooh, Nightmare Shepherd. Well, play the land, play... Temeret Calls the Dead. Do our best to whiff, but thankfully that Fen Lurker's in the graveyard. Make a zombie to block Scorch Spitter. Pwn it. Yeah, we, we're going to need a removal spell, I think, uh, to deal with a potential Ember Cleave. There's an Ash Phoenix. Pwn it. Gets in. Hits us to 16. Well, mill, mill, mill. Get rid of Nightmare Shepherd. Play a land. Play Nightmare Shepherd. Get in with a zombie. Opponent, land, attacks, no blocks. Down to 14. And all right, there's Bone Crusher. Land here would be fine. All right, it's a tap land, but that's fine. Um, So next turn we can Grey Merchant. How do we want to do this? Um, I guess we want the land and the rat. All right, keep both. Play Temple. Keep the land. Woe Strider. Combat. Hit our opponent. Well, if we can avoid dying to Embercleave this turn, we're in decent shape with Grey Merchant incoming. If we get Embercleave to death, then things are a little sad. Opponent. Combat. Tax with everything. Triggers. Well, we will block and block. There's the cleave. We might still be okay here, though. Wow, goes on Scorch Spitter. All right. Um, sack the goat. 
Um, although we're gonna keep the land anyway. Yeah, all right. Zombie dies. We go to 11. Opponent passes. Well, all right. Gray merge it. Drain you. Go to combat. Attack, attack, attack. Hit ya. Oh, that's, we didn't even need to sack Grey Merchant. Okay. Well, it's possible to survive an Ember Cleave hit against Mono Red. Scarily, we're going to be on the draw for game number three, which makes us a lot more frightening. Much, much more frightening. But uh, we proved that we can beat Mono Red if we win the die roll, which is nice. Um, Do we want to change anything? How do we deal with Ember Cleave? Do we have to, like, bring in Agonizing Remorse? Yeah, let's bring in some agonizing remorses. Embercleave is one of the easiest ways for us to just lose out of nowhere. All right, out of game three, we are on the draw. This hand is, well, okay, I guess it's okay. Not exciting, let's see, all right, 10 Street Dodger. We take one, well, Temple of Malice. Do we want agonizing remorse? Hmm. Yeah, I guess we gotta keep it, unfortunately. <laughs> Embercleave! Embercleave. Opponent gets in, hits us. Rhyme Rock Knight. And a land. And a light up the stage for Scorch Spitter and land. Well, play the land and Burglar Rats. Make our opponent discard. And this can't block the Dodger. Alright, opponent has a Phoenix of Ash, which can return in the future. Opponent. Scorch Spitter. And Dodger. Oh my goodness, in shock. Okay. Okay, okay. Opponent gets in. Opponent has one card in hand. Three in the graveyard. Well, I think we have to just Castle Lockwain, Woe Strider. Pass the turn. We could get cleaved. The only good news is if we do get cleaved, it's only going on a 1-1. A Although it's still not ideal. Opponent plays a land. Goes to combat. Attacks with everything. Hmm. Well, block and block. I'm assuming this is Castle Embrith doing Castle Embrith y things. Yep. Well, we will scry. Temple to the bottom. Whoa, Strider down. Huh. This is awkward, but agonizing remorse. Get rid of the Phoenix. Angrass Rampage. Make our opponent sacrifice. All right, I mean, we're at 10, we're going to nine. Opponent has a Rimrock Knight. This is gonna be super close. It's gonna be super close. Opponent, what do they draw? Plays a land. Fervent Champion. And pumps. So we take four. Oh, play Nightmare Shepherd. Play Evolving Wilds. Pass the turn. Oh, no good draws. No good draws. I'm rooting for no good draws. Opponent. We're going to need a Gary. We're going to need a Gary to gain some life. Opponent. Combat. Attacks, attacks. Are we dodging? I mean, we got to block. All right. No dodge. We block Dodger. Opponent pumps, hits us to four. We crack. We'll take a mountain. Okay. And Rhyme Rock Knight. All right, so we trade off. We drop to four. Well, well that's Woe Strider. Exile every. Hmm. Oh, we only need Exile four. Uh. All right, yep, exile some stuff. Get a Woe Strider, get a goat. Get some defense, pass the turn. Four is not a high life total though, pwn it. Rhyme Rock Knight, okay. And Rhyme Rock Knight, okay. Opponent, passing. Ooh, Croxa. Well, I think we play Croxa.
Pona's gonna shock the goat. So we sack the goat to scry. Looking for Grey Merchant. Ooh. Hmm. Massacre girl. Huh. Interesting. We can kill our opponent's board anyway, though. I think we go bottom. Kurwaxa comes into play. Put the triggers on the stack. Kill Rhyme Rock Knight. Set Croxa. Scry. Woe Strider. Going bottom. We need a Gary. We need a Gary. We need a Gary. All right. Pass the turn. No attacks. Opponent draws. What does our opponent find? Combat. Attacks. A block fervent champion. Disfigure Rhyme Rock Knight. Oh, okay. Board is temporarily clear. It's a land. Oh my goodness, Temerat. That is a draw. That's not Gary, but that's a draw. Play Temerat. Oh, that's a great draw. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. Now we can start gaining back some life. Opponent. Annex, sure. Well, Temerat. Creature, creature. Go up to six. Untap. <gasps> Gary comes down. Gains some more life. Pony goes to seven. Attack. Pony blocks. Goes to two. Oh my goodness, we're going to beat Mono Red. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it's happening. Pony. Good games. Good games. And that's not the trolley kind. That's the we got him kind. And Rakdos discard. Rakdos discard. When I put together this deck, I was afraid of aggro, but I thought it would be good versus like fires and control and Nissa decks probably. But uh, apparently it's good against aggro because we've played three different aggro decks in a row and uh, we have discarded them all. That is the power of Gary, and that's one of the things I like about this deck. Why we are Ragdos Discard, we also have Gary Merchant to come down and just stabilize or just steal the win even against uh, <laughs> against uh, Aggro Dax, and it's been working. Sweet, sweet. Budget magic time. We are playing some Ragdos Discard in standard, and eh, we got Discard. Discard for days. This end actually looks pretty good. Turn two Fenlurker. Turn three, either Croxa or... I guess we can... Yeah, that's Evolving Wilds for a Swamp. Uh, actually, hmm. That might be wrong. Well, we'll see. Crag Evolving Wilds. We might regret not getting a red source, but I think we have to do it this way. Yeah, we probably... Yeah, yeah, we probably should have just played... The Temple, I guess. For the escape cost on Croxa. Up against Manu Red. Been a lot of aggro today. Apparently everyone's going aggro to try to beat the Nissa decks. Steamkin. Hmm. Well, let's go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. And yeah, I think we have to just play Crafter. It would be sweet if we could wait and uh, get Nightmare Shepherd down, but I think that Steamkin is scary enough that we just gotta get rid of it. Mount in for our opponent. Yeah, we messed up our mana a bit. Annex, well, all right. Nightmare Shepherd. Go attacking. Opponent takes it. Castle Embreath. Opponent gets it. Uh, yes, we are not going to. Not going to play that game. Rhyme Rock Knight. Opponent hits us to 16. And there is Rhymey. Well, play rats make our opponent discard temple of malice scry i don't think we actually want another rat uh, ember cleave is frightening here ember cleave probably ends up killing us actually well we will see we will see opponent in the tank well get him a nightmare shepherd pray to the magic gods for no ember cleave <laughs> <laughs> Anything but Embercleave. Annex is super obnoxious because 
Alright, opponent attacks with bull, so that does kind of suggest Ember Cleave. But we will block and block. There is Ember Cleave. Going on Rhyme Rock Knight. Uh, so we will get this back, make our opponent discard. Annex dies. Wow, this works. The timing works. Get rid of Rhyme Rock Knight. So opponent does get a couple of dorks. Ooh, Drag to the Underworld is nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, well, we will Croxa. Make our opponent discard their last card. Um, decline. Play a land. Attack. Hit our opponent to eight. What do you got, opponent? Opponent equips. That's fine. We can drag the equipped satyr. Opponent combat. Tax attacks. Well, we will block here and kill you. Clear the board. All right, Nightmare Shepherd. It's up to you. And opponent scoops it up. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> Maybe this deck is just actually really good. I'm just, I'm shocked that we have played aggro again and again and again and have been able to keep up with it. Like, when you hear discard, you think, okay, this is probably good against control, probably good against, uh, <laughs> probably good against uh, mid range, but not necessarily that good against dedicated aggro. But so far, it's been good against dedicated aggro. All right, so. We will go down Bolas to Citadel. We will go down Plague Crafters, which are pretty bad against Annex. We will go down Davriel, and we will go down a Burglar Rat. Uh, Bugler Rat, I mean. Actually, let's go down two. Agonizing Remorse is important because it gets rid of the Annoying Phoenix from the Graveyard, and it lets us target Embercleave, which our other discard is good uh, just as random discard like we get rid of something and it's a two for one technically but if our opponent called on the ember cleave ember cleave can beat us by herself i think if our opponent had put ember cleave on annex we probably lost there uh but they went the other direction and we got the win <laughs> our bone's gonna be on the play which makes it challenging but we do get some good sideboard options or at least decent sideboard options ember cleave is a scary magic guard good lord Somewhat less scary, I guess, in Mono Red. Outside of, like, Annex, just because our creatures aren't as big. But still, it's a lot of damage, and it comes out of nowhere. All right, opponent's on the play. Let's see what our hand reveals. Also, we beat Mono Red without drawing at Gary, which is probably even more impressive. And by playing the wrong land on turn one, so we could never get back Kroxa. Oh, wow. Oh, how greedy are we? If we just draw a Swamp, this hand's pretty good. Yeah, I think we got a mulligan. Not that greedy. All right. Well, we will put a... Actually, I think we put Croxa to the bottom. We're going to have to get a swamp with this, so... Vowing Wilds, go. Well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. What do you got, opponent? Mountain and... Cavalcade. All right. That's hard to interact with. We will grab a swamp. Come on, Lance. Well, let's Agonizing Remorse. Oh... Wow, that's a lot of stuff that kills us if our opponent draws a land. Uh, well, I guess we take Chandra. Come on, no land. Opponent also had a risky keep. Oh, all right. There's the land and the annex. Well, agonizing remorse. Take light up the stage. Yeah, we need our opponent to not hit that land. And we need ourselves to hit a land at some point. Opponent grows annex, gets in, hits us. 14. Well, that's a land. Um, how do we do this? Let's Fenlurger. All right, opponent keeps the Lava Coil, go down Torbran. Eee, Fervent Champion. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good at all. All right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, now we take a million. Five, six, seven, eight. We go to six. I don't play Woe Strider. 
Pass the turn. Yeah, we are in really, really rough shape here. Opponent. In combat. Attacks with both. Triggers, triggers. We drop to four. Well, we gotta hope our opponent didn't top deck anything. Block, block. Sack the goat. Although this ends... Well, keep Castle Lock, Wayne. This ends with our opponent getting another 1-1. One, one. Play the land. How can we get back in this? Is it possible? We're going to 2? No, play Nightmare Shepherd. Pass the turn. Opponent draws. Ooh, these Cavalclades. If opponent has removal, we are... Okay, Scorch Spitter. Combat. Opponent attacks, attacks. We drop to two. We block, we block. So we have to top deck an untapped pain-free land. I guess, actually, we can sack our goat to scry for one. You know, opponent gets some more one ones. Well, all right, scry for the land. Oh, that's tapped. Budget mana. Oh, come on, deck. Come on, deck. One time. All right. Yup. Well, there is a drawback to uh, to being a budget deck. We might have won. What would have happened? One, two. We would have gained ten and then taken six, seven. Yeah, we might have won. Definitely not guaranteed. Pony got through a lot of damage. But if that was, uh, if that was a non-budget land, I think there's a chance that we win. Um, all right. Yep. We're on the back. We're on the play, which is helpful. Double Cavalcade Annex is kind of, uh, kind of annoying. Annex just makes those one ones, and the one ones don't seem that good. But when you got a Cavalcade out, it just means every creature you kill ends up turning into a one one that triggers Cavalcade. Ugh. 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 Even with our opponent being on the draw and having double Cavalcade and top decking that third land with their risky keep. We were still an untapped land away. Now, uh, this is this is just too slow. We can't do it. Budget mana. All right. Well, I guess this will keep. Not super excited about it, though. We get to Croaxa, but we're not especially close to, hmm, to getting it back from our graveyard. All right. We'll see. Yeah, budget mana definitely can. In, like, eight games out of ten, it's not an issue. But then... The 1 out of 10, it's very painful. Or 2 out of 10, whatever it is. And we've kind of got a couple of those in a row this match. Well, play the land. Agonizing remorse you. Frenzy, Embercleave, Steamkin. Hmm. And Lava Coil. Well, I guess we take Lava Coil. And hope our opponent does not draw lands. Because they can't cast anything unless they start drawing lands. Opponent plays the land. Plays Steamkin. Gets in, hits us. Down to 17. Now, well, play the land, play Temerat. Pass the turn. All right, opponent does draw land. Passes. Well, Castle Lockway, Nightmare Shepherd. No attacks. Well, we're getting some defense set up. All right, opponent's drawn all the lands. Runs out Frenzy. Now, that's a little unfortunate that our opponent hit two lands in a row. Oh, play Nightmare Shepherd. Evolving Wilds. Go to combat. Hit our opponent. But there's a Frenzy on the battlefield and an Ember Cleave in hand and a Steamkin. Although, I guess they can't cast that. All right, opponent goes Annex. Grow Steamkin. Yep. Combat. Attacks. I mean, we are going to block. Maybe we can just win this race in the air. We are at 17. Crag of Alving Wilds. Uh, I guess we should have two mountains, shouldn't we? <gasps> Gray Merchant. Oh my god, we're going to steal it! We're going to steal it! That's a Gary! That's a Gary! That's eight in the air! And, uh, yeah. Whew! Taking out Aggro again! Apparently we're just the Aggro Assassin. <laughs> this deck. This deck, this deck. Okay. Uh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't the matchups we were hoping to hit, but we're winning them. We're winning them. We're winning them. All right. Budget magic time. We are playing some Rakdos Croxa 
discard, discard devotion, a little bit of, a little bit of each. Mash it all together. Hopefully, win some games. Uh, hmm. Uh, all right, we'll keep this. It would be nice to find a swamp. Oh my god. Mono red for days. Uh, all right, we're going to concede this match. We've played mono red twice in a row. I don't really. We played two different versions. One was a cavalcade version. One was normal mono red. But uh, I don't. I don't want to have uh, three in a row in the video. So we're just going to. I mean, it's not good ranking wise, but it's about it's about the content, not about the ranking. So we're just going to concede and queue again and hopefully play against. Hopefully play against a non mono red deck. I can kind of deal with two in a row. Uh, but three in a row is just, that's, that's too much. I don't even like having two of the same matchup if I can avoid it, but in standard it's kind of unavoidable sometimes. And at least, like I said, one was just mono red and one was cavalcade, so there were differences between the two decks. Alright, let's try this again. Uh, alright, so we continue losing die rolls, <laughs> which hasn't actually been the end of the world. Eh, alright. We are going to uh, bugle, bugletron. <laughs> All right, this is not mono red at least. Land you. Well, we're gonna make you discard some cards, opponent, and then hopefully we're gonna play Bolus to Citadel and play a bunch of stuff, and you're gonna lose. <laughs> that's our that's our goal. That's our plan. Opponent grabs an island. Sure. So this might be control of some kind. Looks like control of some kind. Well. <laughs> Bugler Rat, number one. Opponent discards a land. Sure. Island for our opponent, and Narset. Well, joke's on you, opponent. We don't believe in drawing cards. Gets another Narset. Oh, uh, that's not bad. Bugler Rat hit our opponent. Plague Crafter. Sack the Rat. Get rid of the Narset. And then... Playcrafter can snipe another Narset if our opponent uh, just runs it out. Scryland to the top. We do want to keep drawing lands. That's a land. We'll play the land. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. <laughs> uh, Alexa thought I was asking about a Luxembourg footballer. <laughs> uh, huh. This is interesting. Let's rat. Opponent counters. Well, let's wrath. A little bit worried about a wrath, but opponent. Castle Ardenvale. Narset. My prowess, home your prowess. And that's fine. We get to kill the Narset. And then play Nightmare Shepherd in case our opponent does wrath. And Elspeth conquers death. Well, hmm. Go to combat. Kill Narset. Hit our opponent. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we got to pass, unfortunately. If we run out Nightmare Shepherd, it just gets got by Elspeth Conqueror's death. All right, there's Elspeth Conqueror's death. We're going to take down our Playcrafter, sure. Now we untap. Play Nightmare Shepherd. Hit our opponent down to 17. This does mean a Narset's going to return at some point. Land. Oh, show us, show us that dream trawler. Show us that dream trawler. Okay. Uh, well, we will plague crafter. Sack rat. Get back rat. Make our opponent discard. Hit our opponent down to 13. So our opponent gets to get back dream trawler. But... If Plaguecrafter dies, oh, this Castle Ardenvale. Oh, boy. All right, that's a lot of Dream Trawlers. Huh. All right, that is an issue. Well, play Evolving Wilds. Hmm. What do we do about this? Ugh, that's so many Dream Trawlers. Well, drag to the Underworld Plaguecrafter. Uh, we might be we might be getting trawled here. Man, we've managed to kill multiple dream trawlers, but apparently our opponent has just infinite 
Dream Trawlers. We'll sag Bugler Rat. Opponent loses a Dream Trawler. Well, pass the turn. But Dream Trawler gets to survive and start doing its thing. Yeah, opponent draws. Combat gets in, draws, gains a million life. Ugh. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, Dream Trawler's a good magic card. Sure. We drop to 14. Opponent. Uh, Land. Well, crack Evolving Wilds. Grab a Mountain. Go to combat. Attack. Ugh. I don't think this leads to victory, though. Uh, attack our opponent. Opponent goes to 15. Um, yeah, play Grey Merchant. Drain our opponent to 10. But there's still a Dream Trawler. Opponent, yeah, makes a 1-1. One, one. Draws a guard. I guess there is... Teferi. I guess there is some world where we draw a land, play Bolus' Citadel, and just chain together enough stuff to win, but... I don't know how likely that is. This Dream Trawler is going off. Opponent hits us to 12. That's not the land we wanted. Well, go to combat. Attack to fairy, attack to fairy. To fairy dies. Well, we will Nightmare Shepherd. Opponent, ugh, found a counter. Yeah, okay. Well, bad news is we're gonna lose. Good news is it took three Dream Trawlers for our opponent to beat us. Uh, opponent needed literally three dream trawlers which that's a lot like we fought through one of the hardest to beat cards in standard two copies of it and we're still in a position to win uh but our opponent opponent had three copies which is a little bit rough because usually the decks can only play two copies all right archon birth yeah, now we're just too low on life, I think, to uh, really have a chance. We're gonna need, we're gonna need Gray Merchant just as the top card of our deck when we play this Citadel to have any chance. Opponent, yeah, gets a land, doing all that stuff, plays the land. Whoa, Strider! Well, we play the Citadel, and yes, that means we're dead. All right, well. That was a lot of Dream Trawlers. That was a very high, unfortunate number of Dream Trawlers. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. I mean, our discard should be good against what our opponent's doing. It's uh, a little bit of a bummer that it didn't work out that game, but having all these discard spells should be a good way to attack our opponent's deck. So we'll bring in Agonizing Remorse. We will bring in Angrass Rampage, Treacherous Blessing, Duresses. We will go down. The question is going to be, what do we cut, honestly? That is that is the tricky part. Is Angrass Rampage actually worth it? We saw a bunch of... I mean, I guess it snakes Planeswalkers, too. The problem is, we have a lot of cards that seem good in this matchup. Our discard is good. Our card draw is good. Nightmare Shepherd is probably necessary. I guess we can, like... Trim Woe Striders. Maybe trim a couple Temrat Calls the Deads. Trim some Bugler Rats. Go one Rampage. Maybe uh, maybe one Treacherous Blessing? Yeah, we actually have like too many cards that we want in this matchup. Maybe we gotta cut Bugler Rats all together. Oh, uh, it's tough. The Edicts are good in some situations. They get rid of a Dream Trawler, but we saw Archon. So our opponent has ways of dealing with that. We'll see. The targeted discard does seem important. Well, we're going to keep this. Trust that we hit land number three. Once we hit land number three, we can Woe Strider to scry for more lands. Eventually, we will Croxa. All right. Swamp, go. Well, come on, land. Land, land, land. Opponent plays a tap land. Well, that's land number three. We will play Fenlurker. Get rid of a land. Uh, opponent. Island. Well, play the swamp. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Tamarack calls it in. Ugh! Mill a whole bunch of gray merchants. 
Yeah, we kind of kind of would have liked to play our Grey Merchants at some point. Opponent, tap land. Passes. Well, mill some cards. Exile a Plague Crafter. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. Down to 16. Duress you. Take Shatter the Sky. Scryland. Keep the Swamp. All right. Well, can we win before our opponent starts trawling? That is the that is the question. Pwn it. Scryland. To the top. Well, we get to do a bit of scrying. Uh, do we want the mountain? How many cards are in our graveyard? Enough. All right, we will keep the mountain. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. Opponent goes to 11. Croxa. Make our opponent discard. Land. Woe Strider. And pass the turn. Opponent draws. I think our opponent needs a Wrath. Elspeth conquers death. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, there's Elspeth conquers death. Gets rid of Woe Strider. Passes. Well, we will play the mountain. Croxa. One, two, three, four, and five. Make our opponent discard. It's a land. Attack with everything. Opponent to three. They got to draw a wrath. If they draw a wrath, they have a chance. It's a land. It's a dream trawler. That does not do it. We got Gary. We got the Gary. Boom. Gary, get in those last points. I guess Karak's attack would have done it as well. All right. That's more of how we picture it going against this deck. Just hit you with so much discard that you can't really get anything going. And that went pretty much to plan that is that is how we want this matchup to go almost exactly like that just play so many cheap two for one discard spells that it's hard for our opponent to keep up all right well we can take them down we proved that much uh yeah i guess we just run it back try to do that one more time this time being on the draw come on Dak. come on give us give us that nice discard ad Okay, we'll keep this. Mana's slightly awkward, but I think that's fine. Evolving Wilds, because we're going to have to Evolving Wilds for a Swamp, I think. All right, Pony has a Birth. Well, crack this. Grab... Actually, yeah, we have to take a Swamp to make Castle Aquain come into play on tap. Yeah, grab a, grab a Swamp. Well, Castle Lockwing, Agonizing Remorse you. Absorb to fairy omen of the sea. Well, we'll take to fairy. Opponent gets a dork. We would like to draw red mana. Opponent plays a land. Passes. Well, we will play Castle Lockwain. Agonizing remorse you. Opponent counters. Yup. Come on, land. Come on, land. Come on, land. Pwn it. Scry land. Come on, Dak. Show us a land. To the bottom. All right. Treacherous blessing. Ooh, another absorb. Okay. Land, 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 land. We need lands. Pwn it. Because this could be building towards a dream trawler. Oh. No, not like this. We have so much discard in hand, but we're not hitting our land drops. Pwn it. Gets an island. Finds it to fairy. Takes it up. That's more like it. Can we draw land? Evolving Wilds. All right. Well, Fen Lurker. Get rid of a card. Evolving Wilds. Go. Ooh, the budget mana strikes again. Pass the turn. Found it over to the sea. Oh, if they get down a Dream Trawler here, it's going to be very, very hard for us to uh, to beat it. 
If we had hit an untapped land, our opponent would be empty-handed and a land short from casting Dream Trawler. Leaves it on top. Not a good sign. Opponent. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, these tap lands can be a problem. Okay, birth. Well, that's not exactly what we were afraid of. Gets a planes. Bounces birth. Gets a planes. Bounces omen of the sea. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Draws a card. Planes. Opponent. Passing. Well, crack of Valfing Wilds. Grab our mountain. Play Croxa. Make our opponent discard. All right, flashes in the Omen of the Sea. One on top, draws a card, discards a card. Well, Fen Lurker. Get rid of a card. Uh, no attacks. Is it a Dream Trawler? That is the question. Takes up to Fairy. This might be a Passes. Ugh, how do we do this? Let's Woe Strider. Still missing land drops. Yep. Well, no attacks past the turn. Opponent scries. One on top. Untaps. Gain some life. Elspeth conquers death. All right, that's less than ideal, I would say. Uh, let's sack the goat to scry. Um, is a swamp even worth it here? I mean, we do need land, so we'll keep it. We lose our woe strider. Opponent takes up to fairy. Goes nothing. Well, we will play the land. We will hmm, play the fen lurker. Get rid of a card. <sighs> Pass the turn. Opponent on taps. Take it up, Elspeth Conquer's death. No dream trawler still, please? Okay. Teferi bounces, you. draws a card. Looking for that trawler. Tap land. And opponent passes. Ooh, and grass rampage, eh? Hmm. Well, play Nightmare Shepherd. Omen of the Sea. Leaves one on top, draws a card. And absorb number 79. All right, we will not attack. We actually want Teferi to live this turn because of this Elspeth Conquer's death. Opponent takes up Teferi. I've got time. Birth. Gets a planes. Plays the planes. I'll play the land. Angrass Rampage. Planeswalker. To fairy down. Well, we go attacking. <sighs> Put it blocks and blocks. Yeah, these walls are slowing down our offense. And a dream trawler is going to come eventually. And that's when things are very, very bad. Opponent. Scries two. These walls are a big buffer for our edicts. Leaves one on top. Is it a dream trawler? Archon. Okay, that's also not good for us. Uh, opponent. Passing. Well, we will draw a card. Land. Well, we will agonizing remorse our opponent. Absorb. That's got to be... That's got to be all the absorbs, right? Play a swamp. Draw a card. No attacks. Ooh, it's slipping away. Slip, slip, slip it away. Pwn it. Upkeep. Scries. That, yeah, they have drawn every single absorb. Everyone. Two to the bottom. Draws a card. How do we beat this Archon? Opponent gains a life. Gets in. Gains more life. 
Yeah, Birth has been insane in this matchup. Opponent plays a tap land. Passes. Well, play Davriel. No one has Make our opponent discard. Let's tidy up in there. Pass the turn. Opponent can scry with Omen. Ooh, yeah. One on top. What is the one? Opponent gets pinged, but they're at 37. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> Opponent gets in at Davriel. Sure. Davriel dies. And it's Dream Trawler. All right. Well, that is not great. Actually, maybe this works out. We get to Gray Merchant. Okay, okay, we're back in it. Gray Merchant, that drag to the underworld. Gray Merchant for a bunch. Kill Dream Trawler. Okay, the game continues. The game continues. We're back up to 17, pwn it. Desperation upkeep, Scry? That's what it looks like. Eventually, we'll hit a red source for Croxa. Two to, oh, two to the top. Okay, opponent. Going to Banishing Light. Hits our Gray Merchant. All right, that's not ideal. Gets in, hits us. Well, play Nightmare Shepherd. Play Plague Crafter. Sack Plague Crafter. Get back, Plague Crafter. Sack, Plague Crafter. No attacks. Opponent draws. What did they draw? More removal. Devout Decree. Oh, no. Oh, no. Our opponent has all the answers. Gets in for five. Oh, not looking good. Yep. Not looking... Oh, I think they got us. Oh, so close. I'm going to play Playcrafter. Oh, Sack Fenlurker. Draw, because why not? We still have not hit a second Red Sores, and we're... Well, we finally hit a second Red Sores. Too late, though. Scry, duress to the bottom, too late. Oh! All right, go attacking. Oh, what a painful way to lose. Oh, we had it set up to where we wanted, but our opponent, I mean, I guess they are playing a control deck. So our opponent having infinite removal spells in a row probably shouldn't come as a surprise that is kind of par for the course if you are control opponent hits another dream trawler of course we draw nothing and now we can scoop it up oh man oh 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 oh, oh. all right well ha huh. i guess we'll have to settle for a 4-1 which oh i wanted that one well, all right, all right, all right. So what do we learn this week about Rakdos Croxa discard in Theros Beyond Death Standard? And overall, we went four and one with the deck, although the way that we got to four and one, uh, I wouldn't have believed it. If you told me heading into these matches that we would play almost exclusively aggro and beat aggro every single time and only play like controller mid range once and lose to it, that's the exact opposite of what I thought would happen with this deck. This is a deck that when I put it together, I thought, all right, this is going to be good against the Nissa decks. It's going to be good against fires. It's going to be good against control. Probably going to struggle against aggro, but whatever, that's fine. But the exact opposite happened. We played against aggro on repeat. Gruel Adventures, Mono Rad, Cavalcade, just again and again and again, and we were able to take down all those decks, even when we were on the draw some of those matches. So apparently the deck is actually pretty reasonable against aggro, hilariously. And then against control, 
I don't know. That match was a little disappointing to me. I feel like we should be good against Control. It just didn't happen to work out in the one match that we got to play it. The deck, though, it's really synergistic, and it's actually really fun to play. Uh, if you like making your opponent discard, as well as some, like, Light Devotion synergies, some really sneaky sacrifice synergies, this deck kind of mashes together a ton of cool play styles. Like, it's partly a discard deck. I mean, that is the heart of the deck, making our opponent discard every turn. But then it's got the, like, Low Strider, Nightmare Shepherd... Uh, aristocrat synergies and then of course we got gray merchant to just close out the game so you mash that all together and it's a really sweet and apparently pretty effective package the only thing i would say as far as changes to the deck uh maybe two i would mention assuming you're not upping the budget i mean the easiest way to uh improve the deck is improve the mana base get rid of evolving wilds play blood crypt that adds a lot of money to the budget but if you're playing the budget build uh one thing i would recommend add a second mountain and not being able to evolving wilds for two mountains was something that came up in a couple of games specifically for Karaxa. If you look at our deck, just laid out here on the screen, it looks like we never need more than one red mana, but it's double red to escape Karaxa, so not having that second mountain in our mana base yes, it's a little clunky with like Yarax Fenlurker, that might give us some trouble sometime, but I think our deck can support two mountains to get with Evolving Wild, so that's one really easy change. The other thing is, uh, I think we might be a little overloaded out of control in the sideboard as weird as that sound, when we played against control we actually couldn't find room for all the cards we want to bring in we just have so many good control cards in the sideboard but maybe that's fine because we crushed aggro four times in a row somehow with this sideboard so i don't know but keep that in mind probably could cut a little bit back on some of the controly sideboard cards uh and use those slots on something else maybe some more graveyard hate would be a good option leyline of the void something along those lines but all in all rakdos crocs and <laughs> discard was pretty impressive. I'm pretty happy with how the deck played out. It was super fun to play. It does some cool things and is apparently pretty competitive as well. So anyway, that's been our budget magic for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.